season two, first episode of 2024. I'm Sorry, let me recap. This is not the first episode of 2024. Last week was the first episode of 2024. This is the first episode of the game that is not an interview, okay? (laughs) So uh, for those of you just joining us, we are a tabletop talk show and podcast brought to you by Dungeon Studios. We go beyond live play from session zeros to campaign heroes and everything in between. Um, We are on YouTube on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. New Zealand time for our New Zealand folks. Uh, I think so. We'll have to ask Russell when he comes back if that time is right. Uh, Anyway, I have a few special announcements before we begin. Uh, Number one, you will notice I do not have our regulars, Russell and Doc, with me today. Today, I have Mike, who is a part of our Dungeon Studios team. We can talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, But do not fear, Russell and Doc... um, for privacy's sake, let's just say life is happening and we're just going to respect their privacy. And whenever they can come back to us, they will, but it is not goodbye forever. So just know that they will be back on the show soon. Uh, Okay. Let's see. I do have a couple other announcements. We are back from a long hiatus. Uh, Again, for those of you who are new to our show, we ended season one right around Christmas time with a banger episode, and then we played some of our best of. So if you haven't seen any of those episodes, feel free to go back through our catalog. We have some really good ones. An interview with Luke Gygax, I think, is probably our milestone right there. Um, Yeah, so enjoy those. (laughs) Uh, Next announcement, final announcement, hopefully is for our veteran watchers, you may know that our show has run fairly long um, in the past. I think at one point we were going like four and a half hours. Uh, We kind of brought that down to about two, two and a half hours by the end of season one. And we have listened to your feedback. And so we have changed the format of the show. The game is now going to be about an hour maybe less. We'll see. We'll see. It might run long today because there's a lot of announcements. Uh, But the other stuff that we've done, Nerd News, um, the doctor's office, uh, Russell's unsolicited opinions, all your favorite segments will now be rolled up into a separate show, uh, which is coming soon. Uh, More announcements on that soon. So without further ado, Let's roll into our topic of the day. Mike, what is our type topic of the day? And do you want to like reintroduce yourself to our, our fans? Hello there. <laughs> I'm Michael. And I like uh, the voice. For Dungeon Studios, I am a director of media. And uh for everything else, I'm Michael from Michael and Jeremy Still Your Podcast. So that is true. Yes, you guys have seen us post about his show on our channel. So if you haven't checked that out, go check them out. So uh, our topic for today, uh, I had the the pleasure and the privilege of, uh, of presenting, which is uh, sobriety in gaming. So, <laughs> sobriety, not necessarily being sober, but levels of sobriety and what yes. that means to not only you as a player in your games, but how the game can possibly be affected as such. And and on a grander scale, uh, I'm going to title this episode uh, Tabletop Etiquette, because there are some other things not necessarily related to sobriety that we can cover. But yes, um, as we've mentioned, or as you mentioned, uh, while we were off the air, people do like to, you know, imbibe their drinks while they're playing and or participate in other recreational drugs and Famously. such, or, or prescription drugs, even. <laughs> So um, yeah, so we have some, some, some discussion on that. And I have a few stories. I'm sure you probably have some too. So (laughs) let's start off with the fact that, okay, if you're, if you're in a game, right, there's a lot of old veteran players who are used to playing the way that they play. And there are new players who may not know, like, what what are the do's and don'ts at a table? Uh, so yeah, that's why I was thinking we'll cover tabletop etiquette. So let's start off with uh, controlling or dictating others' actions. Have you experienced anything like this uh, when you've played? I have, have you... not. Okay. I, I... I've not experienced it, but I, I would imagine it's a very easy road to go down. Uh, yes. Depending on how toasted you are. 
<laughs> well, not even, yes and no. I was going to say toasted isn't even part of it. What I've seen is the longtime players and, and then there's a new player who comes to the table. The longtime players have a kind of a set uh, play style in their head. Mm. And when the new player kind of goes against that, either because they don't know any better or because they're just like, maybe they're at a table of min maxers, but you've got a, somebody who wants to just role play and they don't care. And they've created a character who has the worst stats and they just, they don't care. They're just, they love to fail and that's fine. And everyone else at the table who are maybe veterans, they're like, oh, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not conducive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. So it, it, yeah, the, I think everybody has, should have an opportunity to play, to have fun. I think that's a conversation that needs to happen out of character, right. With the players. Right. I think, I think that people need to understand, listen, so this, this is how this guy thinks I've designed this character the way that I want to play him. And, you know, uh, you as your character, you know, I, I don't want you to meta game out of, the fact that my character, you know, is a little ditzy or is an asshole, you know, right. these are, these are, this is my character. This is, I think this is going to build a fun story. It'll, it'll draw in. And then you have those people. It's like, well, listen, if you do that, then it's going to mess up all these other things that I already right. know is going to happen because they're, they're thinking the long game, mm -hmm. right? They're thinking the long game. I have a full campaign. There's going to be a big boss fight. There's going to be things that we have to make sure we don't miss while we're, while we're going through the dungeon. Right. Uh -huh. And if you got this ditzy character that is more more concerned about the role play aspect, right? Because that's how they have fun doing right. it. I think that if you're a veteran player, you've played enough games. I think you should open up to people that want to have that experience because you've you've had that enough times. Let other people have that too. I think that that it's very uh very common for people to overplay their characters, and they should they should open themselves up to the newbies. Yeah, that yeah. Just want to fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had this exact, ex well, it wasn't my experience. It was my friend's experience, but um, we, me and my guys that I play with, we've been playing 20 years plus, right? We've been playing a really long campaign together at the time. I think we were playing together for like four or five years. And then we added one of my friends who was a complete noob, but she was very excited to try it. And she decided she wanted to be a rogue and at the table, I swear at least one, no, there was at least two or three of them that were like rules lawyering her and telling her like, well, you know, you really should sneak because that's your ability. And she was like, but I don't, I don't want to sneak. And they're like, but that's what rogues do. And she's like, yeah, but I don't want to sneak right now. And so like, they kept doing that kind of stuff to her. And after a while she was like, look, I don't even want to I don't want to deal with this anymore. Like, I just, I just want to do what I want to do. I understand that rogues are sneaky. That doesn't mean I want to sneak in this minute, but I have to explain to them every action I take. So yeah, that can get really old after a while, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. And like you said, if you are inebriated, then that definitely the, 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 I want to say the urge, the, the yeah. filter's gone. The filter. Thank you. I was yeah. looking for a word. Okay. <laughs> so, and you already covered how to handle it, right? Communication. And um, in some cases, maybe that's just not the game for you. I don't know. Uh, like my friend, she just decided, no, this isn't the table for me and, and moved to a different table. Yeah. All right. What about punctuality uh, as tabletop etiquette? I don't know. This is kind of weird because it's not it is at the tabletop, but it's not. This is like before you hit the tabletop. You shouldn't be late. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't. If you have a time that everyone agreed on, that's a time right. that works for everybody. Be there. You don't, don't want to be that guy that time. holds up five other people, including a, a DM that worked really hard to right. get a game set up for you. Don't let them sit there and wait for your ass because you forgot to update your Windows computer. <laughs> 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 for those of you who don't know mike was a little late because his computer was updating before we were recording but it's you know communication is the key plan he told for these me. things <laughs> he told yeah. me he was running late i did i did yeah. i kept you informed communication that's the key yeah and professionalism thank you um so the the table that i play at we have what's called adhd and d where <laughs> uh <laughs> so we we play on Saturdays usually and somehow we used to start playing around 6 p.m. And then we realized, 
No one starts at 6 p.m. I'm the one who's usually there first. I have food. And then some people roll in at seven, some people roll in at eight. And so there was like two hours there where we're just like shooting the shit, eating food, drinking. But the official start time was like 6 p.m. And so after a while, it was like, maybe we just need to not say 6 p.m. Like, do we just say 8 p.m.? But then it was that bad. It, no, it was getting really bad. We officially moved the time to 7 p.m. and we still do ADHD and D until at least eight. So now I think it's just a known concept in our group. We're just going to we're just going to start when we start. But at least we know like there's a if it, if it works, it works. If it works, it works. But just this is a group of friends I've been playing with for forever. So it's those types of things, I think, are less of an issue than if you were playing with people you don't know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely um, uh okay so next one would be this is a weird one maintaining character if i i think this is more of a problem if you're playing with a group who's very role play heavy right mm -hmm. um they want you to speak in your character at all times and behave the way that your character would behave at all times like you're not really like I'm my character Ibira and I'm not speaking as Amber and telling you, you know, what I want to do. I don't know. How do you how do you feel about this, about maintaining character? Do you think that's kind of a tabletop etiquette issue? Maintaining your character, I think I think when it comes down to I don't believe it should be maintained to speaking at all times, speaking in your character. You could, it, it, because it depends on how you phrase what you say. So right. you say, well, Jesse does this, you know, that's the character that I'm playing in the same campaign. Right. You know, Jesse does this. You don't have to role play that if you don't want to. And there's certain times you do, in which case, if you have a voice for your character that comes out, if you have a cadence that you use that comes out, there's always a differential way that you speak to, mm -hmm. to differentiate between you as the player directing this character and then you you have it, taking the opportunity to role play as the character. Right. So I think I think that it's that's switchable. Um I don't think that you should be dictated. I think it's more I don't think that the etiquette should exist if it does that people need to role play constantly. Yeah. Um but then again, always boils down to communication. If everyone discusses it at the beginning of the campaign, hey, this is a this is a role play heavy situation, and that's that's that that is presented at the beginning of the campaign. And as you start and play, you take the opportunity to role play and stuff. If you start deviating, I don't think it's on. You know, it's probably not. It's not bad if somebody says, "Hey, listen, we're we're trying to." would you mind saying that but in your character because we want to see your performance for that so right. there's there's also ways to go about to you ask. know yeah yeah exactly ask so there's 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 a polite way to ask if if that is the the situation that's been set up beforehand right but you know overall if if it's not a said thing before i think people can switch off um just if people start to get upset it depends on the number of people. If it's a majority, you know, D and D groups are democracy, in my yeah. opinion. You know, yeah. it's uh, so always go for the majority. Um, if you put, if you make yourself the odd man out, I think that you're you yourself are going to have a worse time playing the game. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I was wondering, talking about your character Jesse, which um, for those of you who don't know, we have a little uh, D and D game that we're doing here at Dungeon Studios, and you guys might get a little sneak peek into it at some point in the future soon. <laughs> but Jesse is a great character. And I think when you, you actually role play him a lot in game, you don't really, you're not really out of character a lot in the game, but there are instances where Jesse's character is very strong, kind of, I don't want to, demanding is, let's just say demanding, but like strong and, and strong willed. Um, and there's some, some opposition from the group every once in a while. And, but you remain in character, which I actually really enjoy <laughs> instead of like backing down and going, guys, guys, no, like, I know Jesse's saying this and it's upsetting you guys, but this is my care and I'm telling you it's okay. Like, <laughs> I actually kind of like that you stay in character. I wonder what other people think. Um, if that's, if if when you're doing these things, if they think, oh, that's Mike or oh, that's Jesse, you know, I made the mistake of picking an intelligent character. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, amongst of heavy stats, uh, you know, in a group. And so I, th- I've i never made an intelligent character, so this is an experiment for me to play an intelligent character. And I think that comes off as crass yeah. to a lot of people in role-playing. I... Some of our players have have uh, have actually uh, presented some some frustration, yeah, uh, because of that out of game. Yeah. But I still hold firm that Jesse's going to make these decisions because he's calculated, and I'm being met with a little bit of well, that was a little you know you didn't think about that. No, he thought about it pretty hard. Y'all put him in a pretty tough situation. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for, you know, those episodes to come out. We can see what everyone else thinks about what happened. <laughs> but um, I could be wrong. I could yeah, be wrong. We'll see. We'll see. But I'm enjoying Jesse. I like I, I would actually prefer a game where we are all more in character more often. I actually cave a lot when I play my characters really deeply. If I feel like I'm causing anyone stress, I immediately cave and I'm back to Amber going, guys, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Like, <laughs> I so, won't do that. I know. I'm trying to break myself of it. <laughs> so, I commit to the bit, Amber. Commit to the bit. I'm going to try. <laughs> um, so the other thing that I wanted to mention about maintaining character is crosstalk at the table, right? Whether or not everyone's in character 24-7 at the table, if you and I are role playing and we have a couple other people at the table talking about Baldur's Gate and then the next, you know, Marvel movie coming out and, oh, I played Tetris this weekend. And like, that can be a little distracting. So part of this subject of tabletop etiquette is to try to keep the crosstalk down. This is more of a table rule. I think though, you got to talk to your table, your DM, but um, you know, at our table, we allow some crosstalk, but you got to really like try to not make it so that you're just being completely rude to the other people who are actually engaging in the game, like be quiet or take it in another room or something. But do you, do you have any um, stories about that? Have you experienced any of that crosstalk at a table? Uh, Not, not enough to have an amusing anecdote. Okay. (laughs) Unfortunately. (laughs) Um, Well, uh, thinking about it, um, I'll have uh, my crosstalk uh, because my my experience of being a player in D anD D has been over the internet, you know, mm-hmm. to a similar situation as we're communicating now with our viewers. But I I, I find the chat feature right DM, yes. you know, uh, is is how I accomplish that. Yeah, with certain players that I'm privy to, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. You're that's actually a great. Point and a great way to handle the crosstalk is to have like a private channel somewhere if you're at the, it, whether because I play in person so you're right I always forget about the online stuff but texting um, text on your phone you yeah. probably got all those people's phone numbers yeah <laughs> yeah text you got this yes um so I actually do have a story an anecdotal story if you will um there at the table that I play at there's me and there's this other guy. We're probably, I would think, the two heavy role players at the table. Not that everyone else doesn't. It's just we're com- we're as committed as we can be. <laughs> More committed, I think, than the others. And it just so happens that in our, our role play, there's kind of a little bit of a romance happening there as well. And I actually texted the guy, because I'm the only girl at a table of guys. So I had to text him and be like, are you guys okay with this? Because if not, this doesn't have to happen. But like, you know, what do you guys think? And they were all like totally shipping over it. They were like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, we want to see what happens. And yet every single time there's any like discussion between me and this other character, they immediately are like, so that Marvel movie, like they're uncomfortable, I think, or something. They're, they just immediately take up a conversation somewhere else and they are not paying attention to us at all. And at first I was like, okay, maybe they'll get used to it. They said they were okay. But after a while, it was getting really, it was really getting to me. And so I talked with the other guy and I said, well, how do you feel about, is it just me? Am I being the girl? Am I being emotional about this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was like, well, he goes, maybe it's just, we're the only ones role-playing and we need to involve them in the role-playing. And so then it became, 
Like instead, now I'm having conversation with this guy over there going, what do you think about what's going on with me and him? Like I'm trying to pull them in the conversation and then he's doing the same thing. And now we're, and it, it was the, it was the weirdest thing because I thought that just by us role-playing that they would automatically try to engage. Mm. He was very smart about it and was like, no, we have to actually pull them in to the conversation, into the role-playing. And now I, I don't think it's an issue anymore, but it was, it took, it took a few months. I would say like six months of really trying to like poke and prod them to like role play with us. And then they got it. So I, I was just curious if, I don't know. I don't think you've role played a Dang, romance, are right? You still, are you still doing this, this campaign? Yeah. It's been, Oh my God. Seven years. Oh, one seven campaign. Years. Yeah. So one wow. campaign, same players, You're but we're actually, we're heading to the end right now. So <laughs> what level are you at? We are level 16. I don't know exactly. Our DM After is really seven stingy. I, years. Yeah. I think we've leveled up in the beginning. We leveled up really quickly. And then it feels like there was one level. I think it took us two years to level oh, from- I'm sure it was I'm sure it was a, like did like 10 to 11. Yeah, no, it, it was 13 to 14 was like oh, two, okay. years, two years, two years. <laughs> so very long campaign, but hopefully we'll be moving on from <laughs> I'm ready well, to play another character because what your what your DM does is he writes you a situation He's like, listen, they'll get through this, this and this. And then it takes you three weeks to get through the first thing. Oh, yeah, exactly. That is exactly <laughs> it. We fuck around for sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. So talking about maintaining character, boy, did we stick on that one for a while. So long story short, like, you know, be involved, but don't hog the spotlight, I guess. And, uh, talk with your table. <laughs> All right. Party fouls. This is going to be the big one, right? Talking about folks who might be inebriated at the table, Ugh. a little too inebriated at the table. And some yeah, other I've... physical stuff, but um, let's talk about this. Where do you want to start with this? I feel like you set me up for this one because of Plud. Because of what? Because of Plud. Plud? The character, the character that I played that threw himself into a pit. Oh, you're the one. I had no that idea was me. who was the one. <laughs> okay, folks. Okay. Especially if you're new. We talked about this somewhere in season one, probably a few times. We had a DD and d game going at Dungeon Studios. I was not a part of the game, but I heard that there was a character who, what what happened? Re, re, okay. All replay right. so, this for us. So the way, the way that the campaign was designed, it was designed as an, like an underdark campaign, right? So we, of course we start in the surface world and we, we have to make our way down to the underdark somehow. So, our party was presented with this 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 giant hole in the ground that led to the underdark, but there was an elevator, and so they were waiting for the elevator to come up. There was a gracious NPC who was going to be leading us to the underdark, and my character, I was hammered. <laughs> I was <laughs> hammered. I was like, blood jumps into the hole, belly, belly, <laughs> and then I had no idea how deep the hole was, and my DM started calculating the falling damage that my character would take, it was insta-kill. I mean, there was no way out of it. There was It was hundreds of feet. <laughs> yeah, there's no, <laughs> no saving yourself from that. Luckily, in that campaign, we have these things called, we, 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 we call them hero tokens, and uh, somebody used a hero token to, like, undo another player's action, which is Plud deciding to fall to his death <laughs> yes. by belly flopping into a hole. So my character lived at the grace of another player at the table, but I was I was uh, <laughs> very brash in the decision to jump into the hole because again super hammered and right just took the dive it was the wrong choice <laughs> and that is that is something that I'm I'm positive is incredibly common for people that uh, uh, indulge a little too much uh, during a game yes yes now just to clarify because I I feel like I remember there was conversation around one the group didn't try to stop you at all. You said something like, I'm going to jump in the hole and nobody tried to stop you or nobody tried to say, Hey, this hole fact. is really deep. So I, yeah. I, I remember that. And then I think I also remember that you guys didn't have any way of reviving you or was that 
not it was early i think we were level five yeah (laughs) so so the hero token was probably the only way to save you um but um yeah (laughs) so i'm sure people experience stuff like that even even not being inebriated but inebriation yes i can see oh yeah um just I don't want to say idiot choices because some of them are just, well, this is what my character would do. <laughs> and not yeah. jump into I, I I honestly believe that I would not have made that decision if I was if I if I was sober that day. Really? I, I do not I do not think I would have role played my character jumping into a deep dark hole. Yeah. Uh so that that is just a perfect example of how you gotta find a balance. Uh, I understand that people like to have fun playing mm-hmm. games and you know have getting a little toasty but like it, i i was a little too toasty i think that day yeah and i honestly think people should uh, just consider uh, make sure you just pay attention to how much you're consuming because you you will fuck up real bad yeah. your character will die people will not like playing with you that's etiquette, okay? <laughs> well, and you know that's another thing to consider if you're playing in person versus online. I think it would be so much easier to not really care about how much you're drinking or what you're doing if you're home and you don't have to drive, right? I'm I'm going to in person games, so there's always like a certain limit where I'm like, oh, okay, I got to cut myself off here, so I never get to that point in my game. But if I'm playing at home, like when I when I'm DMing, I'm at home. Oh, there was actually one time. So my friend, my best friend got me this bottle of whiskey for my birthday and, and I, I'm a whiskey girl and I was DMing. Wait, yes, yes. Okay. (laughs) It took me a minute. (laughs) I was DMing and somewhere through the game, I have no recollection of anything that happened in the game and I'm running the game. Okay. At some point they left and I passed out on the couch and the next day, I just remember texting them going, did I say goodbye to you guys? How did the game end? <laughs> what happened? Did I kill you all? Like, I had no memory. Was, and then when I looked at the bottle, TPK? the bottle was like half empty. And I, that was a lot for me. And so I, when I'm at home and you're not having to count how many you've had, that can happen. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't do too bad, but they could tell they they didn't wait for me to end the game. They decided we should go. She's slurring her words and now not making sense. We should go. <laughs> roll, a, roll a conception roll, check. Roll a, <laughs> roll a, roll a bananas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, there's also, this was actually fairly recent. The game that I play in, I have to drive somewhere for that. Um, one of our players is experiencing a lot of back pain right now so much so i think the last couple weeks he hasn't even been been able to get out of bed um we're waiting on an mri all these things but he was able to make the last session and apparently he was on some prescription drugs and also drank (laughs) now luckily he wasn't driving he had you know some one of the other players drove him but we had no idea until probably the last hour of the game. Let me present to you the situation, okay? We're heading to this humongous tower. And the only way to get to the tower is you have to go, go over a cat, this humongous chasm. And there's a bridge that kind of goes up upwards, right? It's and called th- the taint. Yeah. Y- yeah. <laughs> and this, there's no way, like, this is, there, you can't even see the bottom. And then up here, there's a bunch of guards and then there's the tower. And we know that this tower is is controlled by bad guys. So there's no just walking up to the tower because they can see us from high up at the vantage point. They have guards up on top of the tower plus down in front of the gate. And so we're trying to come up with ideas of like, oh, by the way, there's also no magic, right? There's like only level one spells and we're level 16 players and all we have is level one spells so we're like "Ooh, maybe we need to do disguises oh what if that guy pretends that he captured us and he belongs to the to the enemy army and he's gonna walk us in we're coming up with all these ideas and the guy on prescription drugs is like now we should just walk in i'm gonna go walk in right just kind of wait i'm just gonna jump in a hole and we're like wait a minute wait a minute and we're trying to 
like logic with this guy until we realized, oh, you're on painkillers and you drank. And so like it took us an hour of just trying to explain to him, don't walk up, don't walk up. You're not going anywhere. Stay still. Don't walk up. (laughs) (laughs) um, And then we didn't realize how bad he was until the game ended and we're walking him out and we're like, oh, he needs help to the car. (laughs) So yeah, it was a, it was a hard one. So anyway, folks, not saying don't do this, just be careful. I don't know. How do you want <laughs> read the read the room, read the room, that's read a, the room. That's a great way to. Yeah. He texted me the, the next day. He was like, I'm really sorry. Was I annoying? And I'm like, you were kind of funny. Annoying. Is that a word? Like, <laughs> so. All right. Um, Don't take NyQuil and drink before a big D&D game. Yes. Well, the night before is fine, right? The night before is fine. Oh, I thought that's what you said. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I may have. I meant like uh, a little while before. Ah, yes. Uh, okay, so party fouls. Uh, next one would be stay engaged. Um, I have a 15-year-old son in my game. Teenage boy, cell phones, TikTok, you know. <laughs> so he's at the table and something's happening. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you meant your character in the campaign you're playing has a 15 year old son who's on TikTok all day. And I was like, that's how does that work? That work. No, 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 no. Sorry. The game that no, in I real life, you're run. in the game and your son's in the game too. I understand. Okay. <laughs> and he plays. Yes. Um, but if he is not kind of in the spotlight, then he's not really always paying attention. I constantly have to prod him and say, Hey, What's your character doing? He's a druid. So he could heal people. He could turn into an animal. He could turn other people to animals. And there are situations when I know he has the thing that they need, but he's just like on his phone. La, la, la. Oh, uh, drives me insane. So I'm constantly. Yeah. I'm poking at him. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What's your character doing? Or get up and away from my table. Don't do this at my table. <laughs> I'm the mom too. So I get like extra, yeah. you know, come on your aunt. That's let's rephrase that. Come down on your ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The editing is wonderful. <laughs> I, I couldn't finish the sentence. I'm like, wait, what am I about to say? Um, anyway, so yeah, respect everyone's time at the table and try to stay engaged. And if I know that there's a lot of people who talk about like, I have ADD, I have ADHD. I can't sit there that long and pay attention. Um, I've seen people talk about like fidget spinners at the table and stuff that helps. Do you have you come across any of this? Like, oh, I have terrible ADHD. I I have to get updates from my players all the time about what happened. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's sober. I was gonna say, there's been a couple times in our Dungeon Studios game where I can hear people going, "Mike, pay attention." Well, what's what happening? happened? <laughs> and I, the, this is the thing. I'll sit and just I'll just be at my computer, and all of a sudden I go. Like there's nothing in front of me. There's nothing preventing me from like, uh, pay, like engaging in like somebody else's like story that's going on. I'm just like, oh, what's that? Is that a bug? Mm. No, it's not a bug. I wonder how many pounds of bricks I would need to do. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, I'm pretty good. Uh, it's few and far between, but it does happen. I, I do my best to stay engaged. D and D gives me a huge dopamine rush. So anything that gives anybody with ADHD a dopamine rush, you tend to get super focused, but yeah. I'm not immune. I'm not immune to being distracted, but yeah. I, I tend to be overly engaged uh, unless I've been drinking a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. How often do you say that you get that way when you're, when you're playing? I'm just curious. Every, every other game, every other game. Yeah. yeah that, that, that's been the trend. I think it's, it's been like game. Two games sober, drunk, uh, sober, drunk, sober. Yeah, <laughs> he's keeping so, track. <laughs> I'm trying. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so yeah, stay engaged. House, yeah, house rules, try to remember. Yeah, all those things. Know your character and their abilities too, right? That's part of staying engaged. That's yeah. That can be hard sometimes, especially like I know your character kind of has some 
some fancy different do fancy stuff yeah because oh, yeah. you're a gunslinger so it's yeah. it's it's some new stuff and it's hard to know exactly how it all works i got it all down now if you ask me anything about my because unfortunately it was it was once somebody mentioned know what your fucking character does that's when i was like okay i'm sorry yes <laughs> okay you got your hand slapped once and yeah i was like oh, i was just study this i'm gonna i'm gonna make a spreadsheet <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, so yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it, 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 I realized that I was the problem. I was, you know, having an issue with the game. So yeah, yeah. I I I do my best to correct correct it where I can. Well, that's good. See, yeah, you know, try try your best, and I think even if someone was trying to play everything the way that they're supposed to. Mistakes are going to happen. There's way too much involved with this game. Too many variables. Drinking can be involved. You know, medication can be involved, whatever. So, you know, just try your best. And that's that's all you can do. <laughs> um, but it is nice. I will say I like when someone has pointed out to you or let's say someone points something out to me and says, hey, you did this dumbass or you don't don't do this anymore. Please, I don't like this. If you don't show that you're trying, let me rephrase this. If you show that you're trying, that goes a long way towards yeah. the group. Yes, that's the that's how I want to say it. Um, even if you're not like fixing it perfectly the first time, right? Like, especially when it comes to character abilities. My husband, he plays in my game. He's also a gunslinger. And the thing is, is he's a shift worker. So there's, he probably misses 50% of our games. You know, he'll just like you, he'll, he'll be there for one game, but then he misses a game and then he's there for the next game and then he's missing a game because of work. So he hasn't had the chance to really learn all that his character can do or so much time has gone by that he forgets. So there's a lot of grace at the table when he doesn't understand how something works for his character. Um, so, you know, just kind of keep those things in mind. I mean, some people will try and try and try, but it's not always going to pan out the way you want it right away <laughs> yeah if that makes sense and we have the privilege in our game of uh you know not not only uh i wouldn't call it play testing because i think a lot of these have been play tested pretty heavily but we have access to new classes and races and, and situations that's true uh due to dungeon studios content that i i highly recommend our listeners check out because if you want a new fun way to play D D and a new way to look at stuff hey you like to exploiting the the normal stuff that you normally exploit for your classes you check out a whole other thing yeah the comp the combos you can do with some of these other classes and things you know that's what we're thinking about we're being innovative here yeah. at dungeon studios so i i picked a, a dungeon studios specific class of of it's it's a gunsmith so it's not <clears throat> it's not just like a gun fighter but there's there's a lot of crazy things on my class that i had to learn because it's it comes with attachments for the guns making bullets and bullets that do other things like I highly recommend checking it out. You, you know, get a, get, get some modules from yeah. dungeon studios.co <laughs> and, and play with some of these, these classes, you know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's a great plug by the way, <laughs> but you're right. And that's a point I hadn't thought about is that we don't have, especially in the game that we're playing right now, we don't really have a precedence to base our our gameplay on you know like you just said you're a gunsmith well i'm playing a druid that i can turn into three animals at once instead of That's one you know yeah a bunch of snakes a pile of snakes freaking awesome um and there's there's you know reasons why i can i can do that but there's no there's no template for me to look at and go oh this character played it this way so i understand how this works you don't get to watch it on youtube and find out how it works i'm just playing it by ear and hoping and I'm doing of a sudden, it right. You, you start matching up those patterns of what you can do yeah. on top of uh, on like what, like there's obviously there's, you know, there's certain redundancies. You, there's certain spells you can normally access and things like that. And I think we also have new, uh, different spells also. I don't know. I have to double check. I actually don't think we have any custom spells. I don't know. Do we, do we have spells? I don't know. I know we have potions. Josh would know. <laughs> I know we Josh? got potions in a cookbook. But um, oh, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so yeah, definitely finding out what you can do with these characters on top mm. of the, the the normalcy of what you're uh, what normally you're used to. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, 
Yeah. So yeah, going back to, it's just kind of, you know, you're trying your best and uh, do, do what you can to know what your character can do, knowing that you're probably going to fuck it up at one point and someone will point it out and then you just find ways to try to remember it, I guess. <laughs> like at one point, I think there was one of those games. I actually forgot that I could turn into multiple animals, just one of those games, but it didn't really matter that game. So after that, I was like, Ooh, nobody caught me. <laughs> oh my God. Amber turned into 20 raccoons. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> Oh, she turned into a pile of chinchillas. The shit I could do with 20 raccoons would be great. Yeah, they got little hands. Yeah, yeah, little hands. <laughs> what was that phrase you came up with? Man have hand. Uh... Man have hand. Well, it's like, well, it's uh, no, uh, it was the riddle. We were trying to solve a riddle, and the riddle was um, a blessing to horses, uh the uh, blessing to horses, a warning to others, and the 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 damnation of man. Yes, and I was like, uh, hand. We at the dungeon studios, we were spending a good week just tossing out ideas because we could not figure out this door riddle. And hand, I thought was a really great one, right? Because hand is a yeah. warning. Uh, hand was... can hurt people, right? So that's like and the damnation. You could pet of a man. horse. Yeah, and you could yeah, pet yeah. a horse. It was a great guess. I thought so. I was like, hand. I was like, the damnation of man. Hand. Uh, man have hand. Man have hand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> folks, you will see all of this stuff with the D&D &D game. It's going to be great. Um, okay, so finally, we've already kind of brought this up with almost every one of these points. The best way to handle it is communication, right? I, I don't know about you, but I am in a lot of D&D &D uh, groups on Facebook, on Discord. And I don't know how many times I've seen someone post, you know, um, in my game, blah, blah, blah is happening. And oh, and uh, should I leave? And like, never did they explain. I've talked with the DM. I've talked with the players. Never in there do they ever say that. They just kind of bring up a problem and go, should I leave my game? And I've seen that nine times out of 10 in a bunch of forums. I don't know if it's, I'm going to sound a little judgmental here and I'm, I hate it when I am, but I feel like people just don't want to talk. Like that's the last thing on their brain is talking to people to work it out. Do you see that? Well, people are going to project how they normally act in normal situations. It's probably very difficult for an introverted person who's at a D and D table to Ooh. not be introverted. introverted. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. So if, if you, if you have an issue communicating with humans, there's a very good chance that you're going to role play a character that's also not good at communicating with anybody else. And so your, your character's not communicating. You're not communicating. Um, the best advice I can give for that is, you know, just look at the people around you. Or if these, if these are your friends, it's a safe space. D and D is supposed to be a safe space. Right. Uh, <clears throat> ideally, ideally, we all know that there's some toxic tables out there. And uh, I'm sure we'll cover that if we haven't at some point. Yeah. But, you know, uh, it's just do your best to understand that D&D &D is a way for you to l leave your yourself and, and kind of live vicariously through a character that you've created. So if you find yourself being mostly introverted and not communicating, um, communicate through your character. You know, it's a lot easier for you to say my character is doing this. Um, you're not going to get looked at weird. If anything, you're going to be commended for role playing, uh, especially if you don't do it a lot of the time. So, yeah, they could, you know, this is your puppet, you know, talk through the puppet like they do in <laughs> therapy. Yeah. The, D and D is your therapy. And then your <laughs> character is your weird therapy puppet. OK, I like that. I like that. Yeah. OK, wait, I got to ask you, are you I. I mean, I would guess you're an extrovert, but are are you? You are. Okay. Heavily, yes. Okay. I was going to, I mean, I am too. And I, I only, I don't want to say I only, I have one friend who is probably what I would consider an extreme introvert. However, she plays in my game and it took her probably the first two sessions to really feel safe at the table. But once she did, 
the character that she role plays. So this is imagine a very quiet, bookish person, very smart, very quiet. But then she plays an old man rogue who's like a charming, like wo- not womanizer, but kind of like <laughs> and sassy, sassy, and just likes to pickpocket every person that they come across. And so it has been a shock to me knowing who this person is in real life and seeing this other completely different person at the table. And I asked her about it once because I just was so, I was kind of confused. I don't understand introvert people. I don't like, I want to, I really do, but I don't get it because I'm not, I'm so the opposite. And so I asked her like, how do you do that? How are you Amy? And yet you are this character Zeb. How, how, how are you old Greg? (laughs) And uh, I don't know. She's, she's just always really liked drama. So I think, there's something to that. There's something in her personality that lets her do this. Um, I don't know if that works for other introverts, but the what you said about like talking through your puppet, um, I've seen her just be this completely different person. And I feel like it is a little therapy for her to be someone else completely, to be, you know, debonair and suave and like n- never cares about the things that are coming out of this person's mouth, you know? <laughs> I, I saw it in my ex. My ex wife was exactly the same, very introverted. But yeah. if she was at a D and D table, she was she was a Velda, the fighter half orc, you know. And she was she was uh, very spicy and. It's so crazy, <laughs> I, right? I think it can be very cathartic for people. I think it can. Yeah. I think when when you let go for a moment and then you're somebody else for a hot minute, you know, counting yeah. stats and and putting things on the line. You know, there's risk involved. Your adrenaline is pumping. You're just uh, in the moment. You're helping your friends. You're trying to defeat this beholder. You're like, ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> Free Willy. <laughs> yeah. you know, but, I think uh, that's very cathartic. Yeah, I think so too. So I, yeah, I, I don't know that we as extroverts have great advice for introverts on how to communicate at your table, but I don't know. I like the talking puppet idea. So maybe just try to put yourself in your character's brain and and then talk with the table if you need to, if you need to communicate any issues. Um, wear I would a mask. S- wear a mask. Or you can imagine you're wearing a mask. Just put um, like, you know, like one of those like, you know, Zorro masks on when you're playing as your character. It, it'll be night and day. It's like you'll you'll feel comfortable. It's like a security blanket. No one can see you. You're only Carl, the rogue. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on the opposite end, there are, and I, I think this is probably something that extroverts fall into, is the, um, maybe it doesn't, I don't know, you tell me, handling defeat gracefully, right? Like if you're playing in a game where every role is bad, and you're losing the battle and your spells are gone and it's just a shit time. And now you're just in a shit mood. And like, I don't, I don't know. There's just a way to like, let it roll off. But I think some people don't. Right. And that can kind of affect everything at the table. I agree. I yeah. agree. There's, there's people that invest a lot. Um, especially if it's your first character, it's your yeah. baby. I mean, that's the first time that you're putting yourself in that situation. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of DMS are smart and benevolent on those players yeah. and they don't necessarily set up a lot of TPK scenarios happening. Sometimes it's inevitable. It's just the role of the dice. That's why the game is so great. Yeah. But I mean, when you're, when you're playing that character, it's the first time. What was the question? <laughs> About how to handle defeat gracefully. Oh, yeah. You should yeah. always... Okay. In case you edit this. You should always... Always... Your your character is going to die. It's, it's just like real life. Pretend like every day is a gift. Your character can die at any moment. Your DM very well may not be in control of a lot of these situations. The way that D&D is set up, it is the roll of the die. You yeah. can roll... A thousand natural ones in a row. It's extremely rare. There's a calculation behind how rare it is, but 
you could be the one person in 27 trillion to roll a thousand ones in a row and your character is going to be dead. You could be Will Wheaton. (laughs) You could be Will Wheaton, the, the curse of Will Wheaton. And you could just get his normal rows and be uh, rolls and be dead in in five moves. Yeah, yeah. On any character he builds, and we've talked about this on this show a lot. I know Russell has an opinion about it, but like, I personally, if I see my rolls going that way, and I'm starting to feel really frustrated with the game. I start leaning in the other direction and now I'm like, oh, I'm just going to fail on purpose now. I'm done with this, but I'm having fun. I'm making it so that I'm fun. I'm having fun with my failures, right? Um, This last game that I played in, I felt so ineffectual. I'm a barbarian, right? I'm supposed to be the one that's killing all the bad guys. And we have a bunch of other squishy players. And then we have a monk, which is the other guy, right? That I role play with a lot. Yeah. And we're just like, Kill, like uh hammering on all these guys but i haven't killed a single one of them because i basically i soften them up and then someone comes after me on my turn and kills them and i'm like all right i'll move on to the next one so i said and i just want to get a kill because not it's okay a, a, the adrenaline rush of a kill right you know like yeah i'm a barbarian but amber wants a kill <laughs> and so i go on to the That's next what I'm one talking about. i climbed a 40 foot tower can the other characters do that no and there's four guys up there i'm bound to get one of them did i no <laughs> and so by the end of the fight i was just like <sighs> i was so irritated and one of the characters he goes how are you going to get down from the tower because we have no magic right <laughs> so and and like healing spells kind of a mm, i don't know and revivify mm, i don't know we have no slide check right and so with advantage he's like how are you gonna get down from the tower and i said fuck it i'm gonna jump and he goes you're gonna jump and i was like yeah i'm gonna jump catch me and he's like oh he goes over there and so we roll and in my head i'm like even if he doesn't catch me i don't care this is fun right i'm now switching my brain and going if i'm just gonna fucking fail let's just fail i'm gonna fall <laughs> it'll be a glory glorious, be death. glorious <laughs> death so i jump off the tower and he rolled a one to catch me so we were dying laughing because i knew i knew that this might happen yeah. and so he basically role plays it he's still looking up as i basically face plant into the ground next to him and took a lot of damage but not enough to kill me so it was enough to kind of get the laugh and to kind of turn the moment from being frustrated to having fun. So yeah, if you ever experience that, folks, just try to find a way to to make the bad stuff fun. I don't know. What is have you seen? Harry, you've seen Harry Potter, right? Yes. There's that, the one Harry Potter movie where they have the 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 thing come out of the closet and it's whatever they fear the most. And then they just say ridiculous. And it's now something else. And they are no longer afraid of it. You remember that part? Yep, it was the the globlomites. Is that what they're called? Yep. <laughs> you're just making it up. <laughs> I can't tell when you're lying half the time. Those glob globlomites, mm-hmm. they're all pesky. Yep, those. So that's basically my advice: is just do a little, you know, ridiculous whatever spell and turn whatever is pissing you off into something funny. Into fun, absolutely, I agree. Yeah. That's the best way to handle that. Yeah. Also, have a backup character. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea too. <laughs> See, I've been playing in this campaign for seven years. I've had a backup character for seven years and i'm ready to play her no one does that that's not a normal thing you realize that you're in the minority of D players yeah i i know that's, it that, that is that is you should cherish that every day your character is gonna die i hope you i hope that's what you think today's the last day yeah i should enjoy it you know i i do wonder we're so close to the end we almost had what i thought would be a tpk in this last session where where i jumped off the tower um and i thought to myself the DM wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do a TPK right before we hit the final guy, right? But he might. He would. So, yes, I am preparing to die at any moment. That's a good call. Yeah. I think that's the best way to handle the uh, original scenario. Yeah. Exactly. Always be prepared to die. I'll always be. And, yeah, I mean, you can make your death fun, too. I don't want to repeat ourselves. We've talked ones about are great. death a lot. Ones are great. You can I them- love ones. I love role-playing ones so much. I have, um, there was a, the guy, anyway, I'm going to edit that out. Okay. 
in one of the games that I run, that I ran, one of the guys purposely chose a character. He was a rogue, but he said, I want to basically luck my way into anything good that happens. I want, because he's a Will Wheaton. He's a guy who actually rolls poorly all the time. And so he's he's always terrified. He's always terrified. And so he's like, I'm just going to play a character who's just shit at everything. But if I happen to roll a nat 20, anytime he rolled a nat 20 on anything, he described himself as like, I tripped and my foot landed in shit, but then I slipped and the knife went straight into the guy's heart. Like he would just narrate stuff like that. That's great. On a nat 20. Yeah. On a nat 20. (laughs) Yeah. That's fantastic. Just like, it's all, it's like Mr. Bean. He's Mr. Bean. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. So if, if, if you roll like shit all the time, that's one way to lean into it is just create a character who's bad at everything. And then just happens to be lucky. If something good, good happens. I want to make Mr. Bean now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like he's actually Mr. Bean. Like nothing else, nothing differentiates him from the, other than being Mr. Bean. Everybody, look out for Mike playing Mr. Bean in the next D and D game. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right, folks. Uh, well, like I promised, we're gonna keep this show to about an hour. So, if you haven't yet, like and subscribe our show. Um, we put out our episodes on Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, as I mentioned before. They actually end up on our YouTube at least within the same day, if not 24 hours in advance. So if you're one of those people on Tuesdays where you're like, I'm never going to remember when this show comes on, go on Monday, check our channel because it might already be there and you can just click to get notified when it actually goes live. I hope that makes sense. Um, What else? You did great plugging our other stuff. <laughs> um, this is just the beginning of the year, folks. We got new stuff coming. I don't know what they are yet, but I'm just going to do a little song and dance and you guys like and subscribe. All right. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and end this. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. That's that's not pee. That's lemonade. I was going to say, I was like, <laughs> that's your pee cup. You've been, dri- you've been peeing in that whole episode. The whole episode. Just throwing it down here under my chair why do you, you, why do you think we came it? down to an hour because amber can't hold her pee that's why <laughs> oh my god okay guys we're gonna end this here uh just remember that these days can be fun days when you're having fun and talking nerdy with friends anything you want to outro with or are we just gonna uh, a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. Uh, this is going to be a great season. Make sure you guys tune in. Uh, yep. We got some stuff coming up. We do. Can we even talk about some of no. this? No. Ah, he said stuff no. Stuff and things. Stuff, stuff and things. And things. But there's so much of it. We have so much in the can right now that I can't wait to like. Remember, always plan yeah. for the natural ones, Amber. Okay, I will. This is the natural one. I can't say anything, which is really hard. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to zip it. All right. Everybody have a good night and we will see you next week.